My name is Patrick Holden. I've been farming here on this hill near Lampeter for 34 years, and during that time, I've witnessed the steady decline of Welsh farming. But a major change is coming, and it's going to affect you and the food you eat. The oil's going to run out much sooner than you think, and that could create major food shortages. Tonight, I'll be challenging those who refuse to accept we're facing a major oil crisis. Might I suggest to you that that is being uh, a little bit irresponsible? And I'll show how a growing number of people are worrying about how we're going to feed ourselves. Could there be anarchy? I mean, could people go hungry? I think in a worst case scenario, um, you, you could be looking at that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a bit like World War II, where we survive by growing a lot more of our own food. And it needs to be like that all over again. It's the Lampeter Food Festival, a celebration of food. But what makes this special is that it's all locally produced. It's the sort of food I want all of us to be eating. How interested are you in local food? Oh, tremendous. We, we, we've only been in about half an hour so far, uh, and um, we've seen the local food, and, this, and we want to buy some to go home with us. Yes. I'm a great believer in the local stuff. I think it helps small businesses and, um, and it's also good for the community. Supermarkets uh, are not as easy uh, to buy the local stuff. Okay. Okay. It's absolutely clear to me that everyone here would like to buy a lot more local food. But it isn't as easy as that. I know from personal experience that even the locally produced food has to travel from one end of the country to the other before it arrives in the local supermarket. And I want to change that. Why is it we can buy so little local food? We're growing fields of vegetables around Lampeter, yet some in our local supermarket have come 6,000 miles from South Africa. We've become so dependent on this international food system that it's becoming dangerous. Worldwide, the price of food went up 10% last year. It's going to go up a lot more. So we need to start producing far more of our own food. And soon. This won't be easy because we've been losing our growers and farmers. In Wales in 1994, there were 5,000 dairy farmers, for example. Today, only 2,000 are left. Widow Jones gave up dairy farming to start a fencing business instead. Um, we, we started off in uh, dairy farming. Uh, my parents have been farming uh, for, well, through his uh, lifetime then. But we came to a situation in the last few years where we had to spend a lot of money. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the financial difficulties in dairy farming at the moment, we felt that it wasn't worth putting the money into it, so we've uh, gone and did uh, another business. But don't you think it's a sad state of affairs that a young man who, you know, should really have been able to earn a decent living in dairy farming wasn't able to do that? Yes, yes, it, it, is, it has gone um, pretty bad that, uh, you know, uh, a lad such, such as myself, you know, I've got to go out to milking, been forced out to milking, really, something that I enjoy doing, and uh, yet again, you know, not enough money coming in to... Uh, be worth um, bothering with. Young men like Wirra face an uncertain future, but I'm on a mission to make sure hundreds of thousands like him get back into farming. More of that later. First a bit about me. You could say the UK's organic food movement has its roots here in West Wales. I was one of a group of farmers who settled here in the 1970s. We believed in an ideal, organic farming, a way of producing food which works with the grain of nature and avoids chemical fertilizers and pesticides, both of which are made from fossil fuels. Many dismissed us as just a bunch of hippies. But over the years, we've watched our ideas grow. 
My neighbour Peter Seger and I were the first to get organic food into the supermarkets. Now it's a two billion pound market. But Peter and I are now deeply worried. We've realised that we've been dragged into a system that's destroying some of our original ideals. I think the thing that's really struck me is that the current systems of food distribution that we have are no longer fit for purpose because they don't allow regional and local producers to be able to get part of the market. What can we put in their place? What we've started to do here is to try to develop our own retail outlet here on the farm as one tiny effort. Secondly, to, to distribute to more and more hotels and restaurants in this area and then going wider into South Wales to start supplying markets and shops in South Wales. So now 80-90% of our business from the farm, instead of being to supermarkets, is now done locally. I'm not blaming the supermarkets themselves for this. It's the system. Take my carrots. They were sold in Sainsbury's Welsh stores, but instead of going straight there, they went on a tour of the UK. First to Peterborough to be packed, and then on to Sainsbury's Bristol distribution centre. By the time they ended up being sold in Wales, they'd actually travelled about 450 miles. So I've been rethinking my relationship with the supermarket distribution systems because I've become convinced that pretty soon we simply won't be able to go on shipping food around like we do at the moment. Why? Because of something I've learned in the last couple of years. This is one litre of oil, an entire way of life, which is completely dependent. We're reaching a very, very critical point. We've sucked all of this incredible material out of the ground. Uh, doesn't mean we're going to put a huge fence up around all It's a meeting of the Soil Association, which leads the UK's organic movement. I've been director for a decade, and today I've invited along a man who's recently had a massive influence on me. Collapse kind of scenarios, you know, when we're so underpinned by Rob's chilling message is that our society is living on borrowed time and energy. We're still being told that affordable oil is here for a good while. In fact, it's running out fast. And unless we recognise that now, we're heading for big trouble. So what exactly is peak oil? Until I started finding out about this, I used to think that the moment that mattered was the moment when you completely run out of oil. You know, is you start out with a full glass of, of, of oil, in effect, in the world, and then you, you drink it all until there's none left. But actually, the point that matters is the point when you use up about half of it, because it's a change of direction. That all the time since 1859, the more oil we've wanted, the more we can have. We've built our whole society, our whole economy, around the expectation that tomorrow we'll have more energy than we've had the previous day. Once we go over this point what happens is that tips the change of direction and we from every day onward the world will always be producing less oil so could there be conflict could there be anarchy I mean could people go hungry I think in the worst case scenario um, you, you could be looking at that kind of thing Yeah, absolutely you could be very much looking at a lot of the things that we just take as being uh, our birthright not really being not really being available anymore the, the idea that we can just keep on motoring as, for, as long as we like that we live in one place work in another place um, that we can be going on holiday you know and the and things that are really the fabric of society I think will start to become threatened so how soon are things going to get serious well I, my sense from the people who, who I listen to, who seem to be most um, reliable on this, is sometime around 2010. A conference I was at recently in Ireland, that seemed to be the emerging consensus on that.